Hey guys, what is up? It's Dusty here, and welcome back to another crypto video. Ripple and XRP are in the spotlight once again after the news that the US Navy is hiring a firm to create implantable microchips that would be compatible with Ripple's blockchain. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What did I just read? What is this? Well, uh, I guess it's a story from the past. Well, a couple of people actually clarified this in the comment section down below, but I didn't know anything about this. Panos said this is actually 2018 news and the project is already abandoned. Also, there's no Ripple blockchain. There is the XRP ledger, which is open source and decentralized and anyone can build on it and use it for whatever use cases they like. But god diggly damn, that was pretty funny to me. I was like, whoa, what's going on right here? But apparently it's already been put in the past. But still funny though, still funny. Guys, make sure you check out the Bybit competition. A link is down below. And have you actually checked out my Instagram? Yes or no? Put it in the comment section down below. It is worth it because I actually post my daily life on there. A lot of fun stuff that you might want to see. The DustyBC. All right, go to Instagram and type in the DustyBC. And you'll see a lot of fun stuff. So again, go ahead and check it out. Right. Bitcoin is still in a bull market, says CryptoQuant. This is a report by CryptoQuant, the analytic firm. I'm not exactly sure what to call it right there. I guess it's also a, a person, but I guess it's also a, a complete firm. We are still in the bull market. I'm VRV 2013 cycle. And most likely the main priority here, the main point is to sell uh, at least to make you, I'm not exactly sure whatever the main priority would be, maybe to get a subscription on their website or to just show you some information. Because here it says, horrible analysis. The chart clearly shows we're entering a bear market after spending several weeks inside a green area. Man, whatever I'm gonna say to you guys is not necessarily the truth, but look at this, right? They're basically saying we're still in the bull market. Uh, but that is because this, this purple spot right here should represent this little area. Then again, you could see it from two different perspectives because you could also say, okay, well, the cycle has changed a little bit where right now from here on for we're basically within this area. And this is basically the first top, the red one that we are, um, wait, no, let's, let's say it again. Uh, if we actually follow exactly their own logic, cause I wanted to kind of say it a little bit differently. After the red dot, once we hit the green line, the bear market is going to hit, which we can clearly see within their analysis right here, right? Or am I stupid? I think that's the way they put it down below here with the MVRV. Uh, then again, you guys can let me know down below. I mean, I don't really see the positivity in all of this. Maybe one of them just goofed up a little bit, but <laughs> oh, I'm not exactly sure what that was. All right, moving on. And by the way, the internet is so bad. So if something has to load for a little second, can't do anything about it. James Phelan posted, crypto nomads serving the world for risk and profit. Two things to say here, one, there's been a ton of crypto entrepreneurs who move around the world because their specific country is not clear enough. Think, for example, about the United States. If you are an entrepreneur right there wanting to open a crypto exchange, good luck to you, buddy. Good luck. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna happen. It's not easy. Coinbase, for example, Binance US, yeah. But that's mostly because they're already really established and already have the proper framework. If you want to start one on with the United States, Good freaking luck. I'm I'm guessing already it's gonna take you a couple hundred thousand dollars just for the proper licenses in a couple months of your time, a couple thousand dollars, maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars in, in like lawyer and all that type of stuff, fees if you wanna do it properly. And if you do it abroad, it, it almost costs nothing to be honest with you. Just take some expertise, but the exchange itself, getting it to, to operate can actually be ridiculously cheap. And so, it is also seeking risk, obviously, as you're doing something which is not that, you know, they don't really got their thumbs up for you. Uh, then again, there's also the profit, which, I mean, owning a crypto exchange is always a profitable thing, I would assume. And yeah, um, I'm not going to read the article itself because you have, there's a paywall, or at least you have to be a member of all of this. But I could get a couple of cool things around there that the new generation of industry leaders have set up offshore trading exchanges largely beyond the reach of American regulators. And even though I have another video coming later today talking more about how the crackdown is happening right as we speak, I mean, think about it. Every single day we're seeing more and more articles of, oh, regulation this, regulation that. They're getting out of the, um, they're staying out of the way pretty much so. Even Binance, it's staying out of the way of the real regulators because they can't get to them because they have smart structures. 
All right, then breaking news. Security class action suit fought against Coinbase and top executives. Shareholder Donald Ramsey has filed a securities class action suit as an individual plaintiff as well as on behalf of other victims against Coinbase, its CEO Brian Armstrong and a couple of other members of the executives, along with venture capital backers, for allegedly being ambiguous and deceptive about the financial situation and resilience of the company as a crypto trading platform beyond the public or before the public listings. So, this lawsuit has been filed by the defendant's law firm Scott plus Scott in the Northern California District court on thursday defendants lawyers have asserted their claims under the united states securities act with required evidence collected from coinbase's regulatory documents to the sec company press releases analysts reports and other publicly disclosed information about the exchange coinbase is accused of misleading statements so ramsey claims that coinbase and its executives made materially misleading statements in their offering uh, documents at the time of public listing and backing Coinbase's efficiency and resilience with statements that lacked a reasonable basis. Quote, at the time of offering, one, the company required a sizable cash injection, and two, the company's platform was susceptible to service level disruptions, which were increasingly likely to occur as the company scaled its services to a larger user base. So, what's the evidence? Well, additionally, the lawsuit points out that as soon as the disparities between false advertising and reality became public info, Coinbase's share price started to fall simultaneously, referencing mid-May occurrences. When Coinbase admitted the company's funds requirement and revealed plans to raise over $1.25 billion through a convertible bond sale, the plaintiff highlighted that Coinbase stock saw a steep decline of over 10% in the span of two trading sessions, and there are also claims of technical trouble in the Coinbase interface on May 19th. Traders tried to withdraw during a bear run in the crypto sphere and experienced delays and lost money. Quote, investors were also likely surprised by the timing of the issue, considering that Coinbase just went public in mid-April via a direct listing, which doesn't involve issuing new shares or raising capital, signaling that it didn't require cash. So the company's decision to issue bonds a little over a month later is likely raising some questions. The lawsuit mentioned citing a Forbes report on the bond sale announcement. Yeah, I get that. I get that very much so. So it's pretty funny that um, Coinbase, after the entire SEC debacle with XRP, stopped, you know, stopped listing it. Now they're in trouble themselves with the SEC. Now they can get this stress, huh? It's going to be pretty interesting. And then I just saw this uh, somewhere. I'm not exactly sure exactly where I found it even. MSN Money dubs Cardano a strong YTD performer year to date. So basically meaning from the start of the year to now, MSN all right, that, that little website that nobody uses anymore is calling Cardano a hodl. They're basically saying, hey, it's a pretty good crypto. Um, buy it or hodl it. Pretty interesting. I hold Cardano, so I guess I'm pretty satisfied with that. But I would never tell people that it's, you know, the best or anything like that. I mean, uh, any crypto out there, you can actually pick a couple of arguments as to why it's the best. Bitcoin is the oldest. Ethereum is the most active. XRP is the, you know, quote, unquote, best for the cross-border payments realm. ADA is potentially the best proof of concept maybe i should call it like that is the most theoretically peer-reviewed thought out crypto that i know of and so forth and so on you can pick any crypto and think as as why it would be the best except for maybe litecoin i don't see any reason why people would ever use litecoin to be honest with you i can't think any single reason uh but you guys get the picture all right number of investors owning bitcoin has tripled since 2018 well i mean that's also pretty damn funny right pretty interesting to me tripled just in three years, it has tripled. Huh. So, little fun fact. We've been doing this channel since somewhere throughout 2017. And a little, little you know, side claim. The majority of the crypto guys that you watch on YouTube right now weren't even around back then. <laughs> a little fun fact for all of you. A lot of those guys didn't have money, weren't around back in that time. Um, and so, a lot has changed in the, in, the, in the sphere here. A lot has changed. Wow. If I just started thinking about it sometimes, too. Ben, BitBoy Crypto, I remember when he started, it was a really small fry uh, in comparison relatively, of course, to what we were doing back then. And a couple of my quote unquote guys in the YouTube space as well, yeah, no, BitBoy, for example, was a really small fry back then and really starting it up. And a lot of the guys that you watch right now, they started way later, way, way, way later. And you just see them grow bigger and bigger and bigger as time progresses, which is uh, rather interesting, I guess, to kind of see how the space has gone. But a lot of the guys you watch weren't there. So what, what? You know, think about that. What would you have watched if all the people that you are watching right now weren't around? Da Vinci was definitely there. Um, but for the rest, I'm not exactly sure which other guys. DAI came pretty soon, but he also did not start, I believe. There's a couple ones that have started, don't get me wrong, but the majority of them did not, which is sometimes interesting to me. 
and you can see how crypto has just been growing and how there's also more demand, but obviously more supply of just crypto content as well throughout these years. Then after B word conference, American rap icon Busta Rhymes, now a Bitcoin hodler, will explore Ethereum next. Yeah, uh, not too difficult. He just asked a little bit earlier, like, how do I get into it? And now a little bit later, he's like, well, after watching the conference with Jack and Elon Musk, I'm sold on Bitcoin, officially holding it, looking into Ethereum next. And he's most likely going to be buying that too pretty shortly here. So not too excited, as I just said about already. It was already going to happen, so I didn't learn anything new, except for the fact that he maybe is going to go to like a crypto like XRP eventually too, because he's pretty new to it all. He might be exploring. He might like it. We shall see. Guys, make sure you check out the Bybit competition. Link is down below, and make sure you press that like button if you enjoyed it. See you guys again in another crypto video later today, and uh, thank you all so much for freaking watching. This was pretty uh, fun little proposal, fun little idea. It got me. All right, it got me hooked. But again, it's just uh, it's just in the past already.